Hello, and welcome to our video series, Western Unedited, our voice, our story, our time. Today we'll be discussing the LGBTQA plus community and our experiences here at WIU. But first, let me read our mission statement. As Leathernex, we recognize the opportunities and possibilities that Western Illinois University offers us, but as future leaders, we would like to improve inclusion and diversity, spread awareness about our experiences, and highlight the stories of marginalized communities on campus to provide a better future for generations of Leathernecks to come. Our voice, our story, our time. Let's get started. Uh, my name is Brie Plogue. I, um, sorry. <laughs> my name is Brie Plogue. I identify as black and white. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a senior social work student and I am bisexual. My name is Mayani Montano. I identify as she, her, and then also identify as Latina, and I'm a first year grad student in the Public Safety Administration program. Uh, my name is Isaac Polito. I'm from Galena, Illinois. I'm a third year student here at Western Illinois University. My sexuality, I am a gay male, and my pronouns are he, him, his. My name is Madeline Malixa. Uh, I am a nursing major and a Spanish minor. I'm a third year here, a junior. Uh, I go by she, her, hers, and I identify as uh, Filipino-American, and I am a lesbian. Uh, my name is Derek Johnson. I am a junior here. I major in law enforcement. Um, I identify as a black and Puerto Rican male. Uh, pronouns are he, him, and I am a heterosexual. So what is the first thing that comes to mind when you all think about your experiences if you identify um, as LGBTQ here at WIU? That's a great question. <laughs> um, for me personally, when it comes to like, you know, when I think about LGBT at WIU, um, I think it's very accepting here, honestly. I haven't really experienced much when it comes to like, you know, discrimination or anything along those lines. Um, there's definitely a lot, you can, like when you're trying to find someone that's LGBT, you can find someone that's LGBT, trust me. Um, but like, I feel like it's not really like, you know, that lonely around here. I could definitely like, you know, find other people that I can relate to and find other people that like, you know, have similar experiences to me, especially when it comes to like, you know, growing up in a small town and ending along those lines too. Yeah, when I think about the experience being an LGBT here at WIU, I think it's a pretty good experience, like Isaac said. Uh, I think it's, like, like you said, I think I don't have a hard time finding a community really. Um, and, you know, so far I've been open in myself and that's, that's the best thing about it, so. Think of this question I think about my own personal experience and how I've really come to terms with my sexuality in college um, I didn't really think about it in high school because I just tried to push it away because of like my family experiences but being here on campus and getting my own independence away from that sort of environment um, I really got to come into myself and fully accept who I am I think overall Western's like a very accepting community of like all different things I think especially of like the LGBTQ community as well. Oh yeah, I mean like kind of um, going off of that. So I know like, you know, we kind of said that like, it's an accepting community, but have we experienced any barriers when it comes to our sexuality here at WAU or even in general, like throughout life? Personally, I haven't uh, encountered any direct barriers here at WIU, but like, I just think just some general ones that I probably would anywhere else. Um, for example, uh, just feeling like I'm just feeling like the sore thumb, you know. Uh, for example, like if someone, everyone's just excited to talk about their relationship with their boyfriend or their husband or something. But if I want to say something, sometimes I'll be a little hesitant. So I feel like that's like a barrier with like um, you know communication and just wanting to express myself. But you know, when I do mention like uh, my experiences with my partner or I say my girlfriend, uh, it's it's relieving. But also, I feel like all eyes on me, and you know, I think that's just a common thing. But that's what I deal with personally. No, I absolutely agree with you. Honestly, mm -hmm. kind of to bounce off of that, like it's kind of unfair because, like you know, like when you're mentioning, for instance, in like let's say you're just in a regular friend setting, and you're like, yeah, oh, last week, like you know. Um, for instance, if you're talking about, for instance, hookup culture, because hookup culture is very, like, you know, it's very prominent, like, you know, in society, especially our generation, too. Um, but, like, if everyone else can talk about, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, oh, my gosh, I was with this girl last week, all that. But when I mentioned, I'm like, yeah, I met up with this guy last week, then you can definitely tell that there's a little bit of 
hesitancy in the room and uh, everybody's like wait a minute did you just say guy and like people are like you know guy david could take you double take it you know in a sense um and like you know that's kind of definitely a, there's definitely a barrier when it comes to communication i also think there's a barrier when it comes to like you know um just being able to like act a certain way in a sense because there's definitely like you know certain stereotypes that i feel like you know like, I'm not trying to conform to the stereotype, but, like, you know, just my personality in general, just, like, you know, is of, like, you know, certain, like, you know, gay characteristics, for instance. Like, you know, me talking with my hands a lot. Then he's like, oh, is he a little... And I'm like, yes, I am. But that's the point. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's just for me personally. Yeah, I think the language that is used around campus could use some, like, revamping, like, the um, inclusivity of it. Um, not saying, like boyfriend or girlfriend saying partner. Um, I think that should be more widely accepted and I think just used more often. I think that's one of the only barriers that I can think of when talking about being here at, on campus. I think so too. I think that oftentimes that we've been a lot more inclusive lately with like even like saying like our pronouns and stuff like that. That's being like, you know, pretty inclusive of the community. But I think also just like, you know, from my experience, like, cause my, uh, my aunt is gay. And when I like, you know, have conversations about that, I'm like, oh yeah, my aunt and her wife. And they're like, with her wife like it's like a double take it's like it shouldn't be a double take it should just be a thing it's like wait what and it's like I always having like to kind of like clarify like yes that's what I meant um I mean I'm, I don't identify as gay but like I know that's something that like I experienced even just talking about my gay family or like my gay cousin you know stuff like that so that's something that I definitely could see as a barrier for a lot of people in that community and also from the conversations that I've had with people who identify with the community um I know like the multicultural center is one of those spaces that does have like um gender neutral bathrooms. But I think that on campus, you know, especially when you're separated, like, you know, men's dorms and women's dorms, like sometimes it is hard for people to identify in that community to kind of like feel like, oh, like, where, which bathroom do I go? And like, there's always like that uncertainty as well. So I feel like um, those have been conversations through like student government and like housing. Those have been, from what I heard, like conversations. So that's, I think a barrier maybe for some, um, maybe not all, but definitely some in the community. Sorry, I'm trying to go off of you in a sense. <laughs> I mean, like, and you mentioned a good thing with the pronouns and everything along those lines, because when we mention LGBTQ community, like, at least for me, and this is what I'm trying to get over, is that I never think about, like, you know, um, gender identity or the gender spectrum. I always automatically think about sexuality and, like, you know, um, like, people's preferences in regards to, like, you know, male or female or in between as well. Um, and I feel like, you know, we're like starting to make progress, of course, like in society and we're making really good progress compared to like how the 80s was and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. But like, um, especially in regards to gender too, like this is becoming like, you know, a newer topic that's like, you know, starting to like, you know, make headway in a sense. But um, to have to like, you know, consistently have all these different gender conforming norms in a sense of like male wing female wing and all these different things of course in corbin olsen isn't there like a floor that's like you know for anyone who has different gender identities too yeah so like you know of course there are floors like that but then it kind of feels like isolating in a sense it feels like you're kind of ostracizing them and putting them in a like you know oh since you identify like we have to put you in your own kind of area in a sense of course it's like you know for like a safe space and such but like, hopefully in the future, we won't have to, like, you know, have male and female wings and everything as long as we want it, too. There's a new floor coming in to, um, I think it's Washington. It's really? uh, called, like, in, you know, the F, uh, the community floors, like, the yeah. specific ones for, like, majors and stuff. They're adding, yeah, LLCs. They're adding in an inclusive floor. So it's going to kind of be, like, the one in Corbin Olsen. Um, and, yeah, I don't think a lot of people actually know about that coming onto campus, yeah. but. I think that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. I also think that maybe not necessarily a barrier like here at Western, um, just because like, you know, we're all in like this time where we're like getting educated, you know, we're in college. This is the time where like we're learning a bunch of things all at once. I feel like a barrier for like, especially like my family is kind of like communicating like what's happening in the community and even like pronouns like my I was showing my dad my resume over the summer and I had my pronouns on there and he was like super pressed. Like, why do you need that on there? And it's like, why do I not need it on there? It's like, but they just don't understand, you know, they're not in this generation. Like, even if you have parents and grandparents that did go to like college, like 
things are like you, like you said in the 80s like things were totally different like the generations do change I feel like that's like a huge barrier is being able to communicate with different people from different generations about the ever-changing topics like for me like I believe that sexuality is very fluid kind of like you know gender fluidity like having to like you know go to certain like gender norms or like sexual orientation norms like it's hard like I view it more as fluid whereas you know my parents who are fairly young they're only in like their early 40s don't even understand that like having to end, like, uh, like explain like bisexuality like my mom just does not get it <laughs> it's like having to explain it to her and like pansexuality it's like isn't that the same thing it's like no but <laughs> having to explain that I feel like in and of itself is a barrier the relationship I do with my parents and their thoughts on the LGBTQA plus community is a very big barrier for me within my family. Um, and having to navigate that while I'm here at college has definitely been an experience. <laughs> so the uh, third question we have is what has your experience been like being out on campus and been like being around those that are out? Um, I would say mine is positive mostly positive um there's only been a handful of like times where i've kind of been iffy on like something someone said or something like that um but mostly positive i know within my fraternity that i'm in um they are very inclusive with me with being a uh, bisexual um they try to include me in any conversations that they have like about um you know college life and <laughs> hooking up with people and they try to take in the fact that I am bisexual and that I like women and men. Um, and they'll like alter their, um, like the way they speak and I really appreciate that from them. Yeah. I mean like, I, I would honestly have to agree with Brie. Um, I feel like personally for me, like it has been a positive, like you know, experience so far. Um, again, handful of experiences, like you know, like there have been times where I've been called like the F slur or like, you know, it's anything like, you know, along those lines of like, you know, you can tell that they're not comfortable once you come out to them. And they're like, don't hit on me. And I'm like, you're not even my type. I'm like, I don't even think you're attractive. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but like overall, especially for me personally, because I think the gay community is, it's interesting because in our generation, and especially college in general, this is the time for us to figure out who we are and figure out our own journey and like what our identity is. Um, so people that like come out or anything along those lines, or even or that are questioning, I've had a lot of people that have come up to me personally or like, you know, message me on dating apps or anything along those lines. And they're like, oh, like, you know, I'm only on here just to figure out like, you know, who I am and stuff like that. And I'm very respectful, of course. I'm like, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, I, I kind of view it as like, not a mentorship, but like kind of like, kind of like a big brother in a sense of like, you know, oh, this is what the community is like. And like, you know, like anything along those lines too, answering any questions that they have or what my experience has like been personally. So like, it's definitely been interesting to help other people when I was in their position as well, in a sense. I definitely agree with you guys. Luckily for me, uh, the experience has been great. Uh, I feel like I've, met a lot of the community too along the way which is nice because you know you just come along a person it's it's nice when it's unintentional too you come along a person and you learn something about them and their sexuality and you're like hey we have something in common and i think i've i've experienced that a lot here which is really nice and also just being out on campus luckily nothing no comments has been said to me and my girlfriend sometimes we have like we get looks but what I love the most is that I could be expressive like with her and I could just like, I could hold her hand without feeling uncomfortable or anything like that. So it's been really great. As far as the experiences that I've been in, um, like in certain situations, like with my friends or myself, like I think a big thing in relation to dating apps is like when we see, like I have a, con a conversation with my friends and I'm like, oh, did you see like this girl's on, on Tinder? And it's like, oh, I didn't even know she was gay. And it's like, well, she doesn't have to be gay. You know, it's just like, you know, different things. Like she could be like exploring or like, maybe she's just questioning, like, you know, you don't know. And I feel like it's, it's been kind of like, not like a taboo thing, but like a way kind of like to gossip. It's like, oh, did you find out like it's their, like this is their sexuality. And it's like, for me personally, like this is just literally just me. I don't, I don't want to say believe in the whole coming out thing. But for me, like I view sexuality as no one's business. Like, for some people, like, it is a huge part of that identity, and I totally respect that, and I love that. For me, like, I don't really think it's anybody's business what my sexuality is. So kind of, like, being on dating apps, it's, like, it becomes people's business and people's, like, ways to talk. And, like, I don't really like that, but that that is just a part of 
societies that we talk about other people, especially when it comes to social social networks. So, no, see, I'm kind of going off that because I was kind of thinking about this too. Is that like there's so many people where I mean, like, and don't get me wrong, I have been a part of that stigma too, where I'm like, oh my gosh, like you know, oh, there's a guy that's in the business department and he's gay. I'm like, oh my gosh, like you know, oh, this this person's gay, so this person's gay, somewhere along those lines. But then once you say that, or once like you know, someone knows your sexuality and or like if you're at a certain place or something like that, you're known as that sexuality sometimes. They say, oh my gosh, there's my gay coworker, or oh my gosh, there's like, you know, uh, that gay guy that was in my project one time or something along those lines. Like you become, exactly, you become that label. That's who you are in a sense. And that shouldn't be right. No one should be just be a certain label because I'm Isaac. I'm my own person. I'm my own personality. And like, I'm more than just being a sexual, I'm, I'm more than just my sexuality, basically. So, I mean, I think that's definitely like a stigma and like a definitely that's been a thing that's happening in society in general. So to go off that, I feel like um, from an outsider looking in, it's, it's definitely like, like weird to see them have to change who they are based on the situation that they're in. Um, Cause I've never had to do that. So like me, I have gay family. Um, um, or I have a gay cousin. Um, so it, it's weird to see him kind of, you know, li live his social media life and then come to the, like the family parties and kind of like masculine up. So it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird because he's not like that. It's, it's kind of like code switching, like in, in a sense, like for me, like, like I don't talk like this, like with my friends, but I do in this situation. Um, so it's definitely like, it's, it's kind of like disheartening to see that they have to do that just to make everyone else comfortable. Or did you want to add something, Isaac? No, 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 no. I was upset. <laughs> yeah, that perfectly leads into our next question, which are, uh, which is, what stereotypes do you experience or see being perpetuated by others? Yeah. I know being bisexual, the stigma is like we're hypersexualized because um, I guess we hook up with everybody, um, and then having people be like, "Oh, so you like threesomes?" And I'm like, "Nope, uh, mm -hmm. don't." <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll have like people I'm interested in and then I'll tell them I'm bisexual and then you could just tell like there's a switch. Like it's uh, so disheartening sometimes. Um, but yeah. It's like almost a competition. Yeah. Like, I've heard that before. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, so you like both. And it's like, what, what, is, what does right. that matter? Like it's, an, it's not a competition type thing. Like I feel like in a sense that's biphobic. Like mm -hmm. that's definitely stems from biphobia because mm -hmm. Like bi bisexuality is viewed is viewed as hypersexual. Oh, they can get and oh, they're looking at everybody now. Like they're looking at the whole entire menu like all the time. When that's not true. I don't want to speak on your experience, of course, but like you know that's not true. That's why is that the stereotype? And why should someone's sexuality have to affect you being in a relationship with them? In a sense, like it should be a personality thing, not a sexuality thing. Um, and like for stereotypes as well, like you know, I feel uh, along with that for gay men specifically, it's definitely like you know that they're trying to hit on everybody and that they're trying to like you know get in everybody's pants, like uh, specifically like you know just every every man's pants in a sense. Um, and like you know, don't get me wrong, like you know, of course, like you know, there are people like that, but that happens in every single community, no matter what. Like you know, there are straight men that do that, there are women that do that, there are like you know, every person does that. But just because you've had one bad experience with one gay man shouldn't be like that for the whole entire gay community in general. So that's definitely, I, that's a stereotype that I've seen. Oh, also the, fa the fashion stereotype. As you can tell, I am not the most fashionable person. I will put that out there. I will, I, I will say that first. Uh, I do not have a good eye for fashion. I always ask my friend Delilah for fashion tips. So uh, she assists me a lot, um, but uh, why, why are you going to ask me, oh my God, do you think this bat will look cute on me? I'm like, girl, I don't know. <laughs> I don't look at that stuff. That's not me. I'm so sorry. But yeah. I think another stereotype that uh, is being perpetuated a lot that I actually really dislike and I'm super passionate about is the idea that people will have about uh, LGBTQ plus relationships and that they believe that there always has to be a top and there has to be a bottom. And if you don't know what that means, that means like uh, usually a top is like the more dominant or would some would say masculine type, no. Or they would say the bottom who is, you know, 
the more submissive type or whatever, female in the relationship. I, I don't like this stereotype because it's not true for a lot of people in relationships, you know? So I don't like getting, sometimes people will ask like, oh, so who's the man in the relationship? Well, first of all, wh why are you putting this like heteronormative idea into my relationship? And second of all, like, that's just not how it works. You know, we're, we're people like, no one wears the pants for, in my relationship. Maybe in some relationships, like it may be that way, but you can't assume that for everybody. And that's what people need to know. Uh, and yeah, that's just a stereotype that people believe, but it's just not true. Or the mini like microaggression types, um, but like if a man dresses a certain way or acts a certain way, he always oh, gay, like mm -hmm. has to be. Um, just those type of things, like if someone wears nail polish, mm -hmm. oh, they have to be just a little bit. Or like if certain action, like someone does something that is perceived to be feminine, I think that's also something that is like done but isn't really noticed as much. And it kind of also like goes back to like at least like you know speaking on my experiences I feel like you know masculinity for instance like there's a lot of toxic masculine traits for instance a guy can't hug another guy without it being seen as oh my gosh like you know either they're gay or they're just really emotional or something along those lines or I can't compliment a dude like you know I can't be like oh like you know oh Derek you have a nice sweatshirt on or something like that without like you know someone else being like oh he's trying to hit on him or something like along those lines like there's different types of things and like, you know, specifically for like, you know, for males or like, you know, anyone that uh, identifies as a male too, like that's definitely something that's a problem in the male community and it's definitely something that we work fixed on in general. Um, along with that too, there's also the stereotype and kind of going back to what you said about bisex bi bisexuality of like, you know, oh, are you open to a threesome? There's also like, you know, kind of the stereotype that the LGBT community, community in general are open to open relationships consistently. It's all open relationships. Oh, like, you know, oh, well, maybe you want to, like, you know, join me and my girlfriend sometime or, like, you know, something along those lines. Why is that a thing? Why do you think that all the LGBT community is just sexual the whole entire time? And, yeah. Uh, to kind of go off that, uh, so I have been trying to, like, talk about this more with, like, people that I'm around. Um, and with my org, we, we talked about, like, uh, we have Iron Chats, which is where like, we kind of bounce ideas about like, controversial topics. And it, it's, it's something where, like, if you're, a, if you're a, a guy seen hanging out with a gay man, then you're kind of automatically considered to be gay. Um, and I, and I'll admit that I've been guilty of, of assuming this and doing this, uh, but it, it, it's also just a part of, like, a man culture. It, like, it's weird to hang out with a gay man if you're not gay. Like, that's kind of, like, the stigma, so um, I feel like that's definitely a stereotype uh, of like of heterosexual men. If you hang out with a gay man, you're gay. So um, I feel like that's another one. Stereotypes is if you identify with the community, you understand all the ins and outs of all the people within the community. But I feel like comparing it to other communities, like being like Latinx, just because someone's Mexican doesn't mean they know the same thing about being Guatemalan. Like it's the same thing. Just because you're lesbian doesn't know doesn't mean that you know everything about being you know trans. <laughs> I think that's a big thing. Like, you know, my parents always expect me to explain every single thing about the communities. Just because I'm, I'm an ally and like I'm familiar with it, I may, may or may not identify with it, doesn't mean that I know everything. That's something that um, one of my sorority sisters, who's actually like my pledge mom, like she is lesbian. She's getting married soon. I'm super excited to go. Um, yeah. And I, I talked to her about something and she goes, girl, I have no idea what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> and it had to do with the community. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to assume that you know. I just thought that maybe you would. She's like, nah, girl. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, we always, like, you know, assume that. So just because you identify with the community, like, doesn't mean, like, you know everything, like, about that specific community. Absolutely. I Yes. Like, I don't understand why people think that just because you're a part of something, you have to know all the letters and oh, all yeah. the ins and outs of every single thing. Oh, what's intersexuality? Oh, like, you know, well, I mean, I know what that is. But, like, you know, other people might not know what that is. Like, you know, like, why do you have to learn the ins and outs of the whole entire community? It's important to know your history. But why do you have to know the ins and outs of every single other old identity? Why are you the teacher? You don't have to be the teacher of anything. Same thing with, like, you know, being Latinx or being in the black community or anything along those lines, too. And then maybe if you don't know something, someone perceives you as, like, not actually a part of the community or uh, not knowing what you're talking about or something like that. Show your gay card. 
Charge your yeah. 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 <laughs> I think also another stereotype that I've seen is like, I don't know exactly like the terms, but like butch versus femme. femme. Yeah. So like my aunt is considered butch, if you will, and her wife is also butch, if you will. But like some people often are like confused, like, wait, so like, kind of like what you said about like, oh, like who's the man in the relationship? It's like both of the women in the relationship can identify as butch or whatever term you want to use. But it's like I've seen like a lot of people assume that one has to be butch, one has to be femme. And same with, you know, gay men as well. It's like both men, like one of them's supposed to be a little bit more feminine than the other. And I feel like that's like a huge stereotype. It's like, no. I know for like my little cousin, like she can be very feminine one day. And then, like, kind of masculine the next. It's like, it doesn't matter, like, what she identifies with, like, how she dresses or how she acts. Like, it doesn't have to, like, coordinate with who she also is attracted to. Does that make sense? No, literally. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. Uh, does anybody have anything else to add on that one? Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so, kind of, like... Um, Kind of going back to like, you know, just start talking about our community specifically. So what do you think about the transphobia, biphobia, and other problems within our community? And how should we address those issues? It definitely exists, which is heart reckoning that it does. This whole idea of transphobia, like transphobia and biphobia in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, what I think about it is that it's, it's just really contraindicative of like what, what, we define pride as or what we fight for, you know? Like, that's why they have their letter, you know what I'm saying? Because you're, you're there, they're, they're there asking for inclusivity and recognition, as everybody is. And I do know, I did know, like, people who were transphobic, although he defined himself as gay. And it's, it's very, you know, hypocritical in a sense. And biphobia exists a lot, too, and I think that has to do with like you guys mentioned before, competition, maybe self-esteem, maybe personal experience, but it just, it's really degrading to people, even though if it's based off of your experience, you know? It's definitely hard seeing the, being bisexual, seeing the biphobia in the community and people telling me, oh, pick a side, or um, they're like, oh, you're making us look bad. Like, I'm like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, also the transphobia is just out outrageous I'm like there's it's actually more prominent than people actually believe like it to be and it's something that we need to address within the community if we're expected to be fighting as one it's disgusting honestly mm -hmm. it's just gross because the LGBT community is founded on like you know love and acceptance and like you know we're the ones that are like you know people are already people who aren't a part of the LGBT community that are like you know homophobic and everything along those lines we're already getting attacked from the outside why are we attacking ourselves to the inside too and what like you know what a lot of people who are transphobic in the community don't realize is that people who were trans founded so many rights they led the way for so many rights that we have today and like you know like they need to put some respect on their names. You need to learn about all these different names, like Marsha P. Johnson and anything else along those lines too. And I just don't understand why, why do you have to be transphobic for like, you know, when people won't accept you for who you are, why can't you accept someone else for who they are? You know that how that hurt is. Why would you want to put that hurt on somebody else too? That's not, that's not right at all. And like, you know, especially for the biphobias too, like people who are biphobic, that like literally believe that bisexual doesn't bisexuality does not exist. Like they're like, oh, that's a fake one. That makes no sense. That's literally it's just like it's invalidating at that point. It's disgusting. I think the best way to I think a lot of those beliefs stem from maybe like ignorance for not educating themselves, and that kind of like leads its way to the second question: is how do we address this? I think the best way to address it is like you know, emphasizing especially through Pride Month because this is like pr pretty big in the community that sexuality is a spectrum. It's in fact a spectrum, and therefore bisexuality is a thing, or someone can be more, whatever. They, people will have their preferences. And even emphasizing and maybe educating people more about gender fluidity, because that's why that's why this the new pronoun thing is a thing, you know? And I, I can't speak much of it, I should do more research, but I think to address it, I think that, that should be joining the conversation a lot more. More ideas and mm -hmm. um, people's experiences, I think, is something that we need to um, have more of. 
Um, and then also watching like our language and stuff. Um, I know I'll hear in conversations, someone's like, oh, I'm not transphobic, but I'm like, don't include that. Like if you're gonna say, but like there's something wrong there. <laughs> so just like watching what you're trying to say. And then if you are like, uh, have a have a question or something, just coming off as willing to learn rather than like having this set idea in your head. Exactly, because like, you know, in general, everyone's learning about everything. No one knows every single thing. And as long as you're just open and open-minded and willing to learn more about like the subject or whatever you have, like that's just the most important thing. Because like, you know, um, kind of saying back to transphobia, even though it's not transphobia, it's just more homophobia in a sense because there's a lot of homophobia with against other gays basically especially well speaking on mostly like you know the g part of the community um what i've seen like you know on i don't know if you guys have heard this app called grinder <laughs> um very toxic app do not recommend it i mean i don't know if y'all ever use it but um but basically on grinder there's like a lot of like you know people who are mask tops aka masculine tops and they usually prefer to find like you know other mask bottoms or whatever they call them but then there's a thing that where they say i don't want femmes and that means i don't want feminine gays so i don't want gays who paint their nails who have long hair who do their makeup anything along those lines why is that a thing why are you why are you going after a certain part of the community when they're a part of your same community. They're a part, they're, you're supposed to be family. Why are you attacking them too? That's disgusting. But yeah, so that's like a definitely a huge issue in the gay community right now. Also just like respecting the fact that people have preferences, but with those preferences, you don't have to be like super like exclusive or super just like you come off like, like rude, you know? Like just because you have a preference doesn't mean you have to like be exclusive to other people within the same community. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, kind of going off what Madeline said too about how we should address it. Um, yeah, I think it, like it'd be good to like you know teach people more about like you know the gender fluidity. Like gender, of course, it's existed for gender fluidity has existed for a very very long time. But right now, this is like the time. This is one of the main times we're talking about it. That uh, especially with TikTok right now. Like, that's where I've been getting, like, you know, a lot of my education from, in a sense, uh, in regards to, like, you know, history or, like, you know, just learning about other people's perspectives and other things along those lines, too. So, like, you know, just teaching about gender, teaching about anything along those lines, having just some sort of history course in general for LGBT. Like, I think there should be a course that you have to take in high school for all these different ones for like, you know, for the black community, for the Latinx community, for like, you know, the LGBT community, for the Asian community. I think there should always be like, you know, some sort of like, you know, like specified course for that. I think also just being able, and this goes for, you know, for any topic, like being able to put yourself and others like in check. I know like one big thing that like, I notice is that if you, like for example, like with um, trans people or trans folks, like, there's that that assumption that if you're a man transitioning to a woman and if you like women then you're like lesbian or like like y'all know what i'm trying to say like there's like those like um different like you have to do this in order to do this and it's like still putting a label on everything it's like i've heard those conversations and i've kind of been like well actually so i think that if we continue to like put each other in check is be like well how about you research that because i feel like we we always you know in any in any community that we identify with Whoever doesn't know or have that knowledge, we expect them to just, oh, like, do the research. Well, if you are part of that community, you should also be doing the research. I think that's, like, one way to address it is doing the research yourself and being able to educate others within and outside of the community. So for the next question we have, um, what do you all want those that are allies to know to best support uh, the community? This is kind of a crew. Like what we talked what we talked about just earlier, or like a great transition into it. I think allies need to understand again. Like I said, sexuality is a spectrum, and I just, that is what it is. And I feel like people as allies, like I know they mean good, but sometimes they people tend to like to label things and label people and label actions. And I think the best way for an ally to be an ally is to understand that gender fluidity and sexual fluid. Uh, I mean, gen, I mean like sexual spectrum is a thing and i think they need to implement that in their thinking and stuff just be open to learning right. in general 
like you know like of course yeah you might have heard something on i don't know you might have learned something from mtv a while ago but like just be open to learning the new terms for things like uh for instance like you know no one really uses the word um like transsexual anymore like that's like a very outdated term um we just use like you know trans person or anything along those lines um yeah, that's yeah. actually. I don't think people use that one either. That's why. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's an outdated term. That's an outdated term. Yeah. I was like, I was like, uh, like I think that was yeah. old. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the, like those terms are like outdated. Yeah, they might have been used in the '70s or '80s, but now, like you know, we use like you know, trans person or anything along those lines, um, and just be open to like you know, just hearing other people's perspectives and hearing other people's stories too. That's the best way to learn, personally making sure you're listening to the, those in the community. Like, um, I know sometimes those that are allies will have like a bigger voice than those that are um, that are in the community and they'll try to like be, kind of come off as like they know everything and then someone in the community will try to correct them and they're like, oh no, 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 I know best. And we're like, um, well, see, uh, <laughs> like actually, uh, yeah. So just like kind of maybe taking a step back at times to be um, to educate yourself a little bit more. Like if someone from the community is telling you something. Amplify voices. Don't speak over. Them. Yes. Like, definitely. and that goes with any community, honestly, in general. But um, and also kind of going off of that too, like um, just also speaking up for other people too. Like if if I if we're out eating and like you know someone's giving me a dirty look or like you know someone goes up to me and calls me the F slur. Like, I would hope that you would have my back and, like, you know, like, like, support me and be like, you know, hey, like, you know, knock it off or leave them alone or something along those lines. Or if you just hear, like, you know, just toxic um, talk in general, like, you know, oh, like, you know, he's at, they're acting a little fruity today when they're talking about, like, you know, some sort of gay person when they don't know that person or, like, you know, they are not a part of the community either. Or, like, you know, even if you're part of the community, like, sometimes, like, I mean, unless you're friends with them and you guys like, have that kind of relationship, it's different too, but like you know, call them out for those toxic traits in a sense. You know, if anything, your silence is noted. It, like period. And then the person that is doing the perpetuating a stereotype or saying something will also note it and think that you think the same way as them. So I think that's something also to take note of, even when you're not around someone who's in the community. Like still doing that to check someone who isn't um, using the best language or perpetuating stereotypes. Like talking about friends or allies, I think Bree, you made a really good point, or you brought up a really good experience. Was that like your fraternity was very uh, like inclusive about that, inclusive and brings you in the conversation. I think allies and friends uh, need to keep doing that because I, I know as my siblings do that now, which is really nice, is bringing you in the conversation. You know, not making it so heteronormative in a sense, like, but not making it in a way where it's like you're the center of attention, tell me more about this. You know, I just want to be included where like, oh, like also brought up hookup culture, you know? Like uh, I want to be able to talk about, or how about you invite me about my experience or something without making it uncomfortable. Yeah. So I think that's a really good way to support and not feel someone, make not make someone feel excluded nor like on the spot. campus is pretty supportive of this community and if so like in what ways do you feel like like Western has been inclusive of the community so we have our resource center um, and it got changed from being in the Union to being in the multicultural center so it's a bigger space for people to come and uh, who are a part of the community to come together and sit down and maybe like hang out with each other I think that's something that they've done really well um, and having a space for the community I mean, like, I'd say there are def there's definitely, like, you know, there's definitely a support group here, and I definitely feel supported by my group of friends and by also, like, you know, other members of the community as well. Um, it's just kind of sad because, like, you know, I wish I would, of course, like, you know, again, sexuality is nobody's business, but I would definitely, like, you know, like to see more people who are in higher position roles that are LGBTQ, like, you know, kind of like role models in a sense. Like, I want to see, like, a supervisor and like, you know, that they're like out really proud and they're like, you know, they're okay with talking about it or whatever along those lines too. Just because I like to see like, you know, kind of like a role model kind of sense. But um, I definitely think that the community is supportive for the most part. 
there are of course like you know there's a lot of bigotry i think that goes with any university in general but there are people who like you know who are definitely against that um like i don't know if you guys remember but um the westboro baptist church one time picketed here and that was like my freshman year so that was like 2018 2019 or so and um though it was disgusting that that was even allowed and that even came here i have no i don't know the details about that i'm sure like you know there's something that happened behind the scenes with that but um there was like so much outwardly love and support from the lgbt community there were so many people that that were just allies or even a part of the community too they came out with like you know uh rainbow flags and like you know uh face makeup too and some so i think someone even came out in drag it was like it was beautiful to see that because like you know it was fighting hate uh, with love, basically. And that was really nice to see. I remember that happening. I think it was because a football player was playing a game and they were they were outwardly gay and the church came and protested. And I think that was like the first time, or not the first time, but like the major moment where I felt like included. Like I felt like I was safe in this community. Absolutely. I think they do a great job too during Pride Month. Uh, I know that the LGBTQ plus center that you just mentioned does uh, a ton of events during the month, uh, the Pride Month. And um, I think what would be nice, though, to be implemented more is maybe make it more like campus wide. I mean, for example, I mean, like just like throw a, pl a pride flag here and there, you know, hopefully no one takes it down, but it'd just be kind of cool to see that as well. So. Yeah, like kind of like down through like the mall pass plaza by the library like i'd love to see like you know just like you know maybe like a little row or something like that with like a couple bunch of flags and uh, yeah i i agree with that personally that'd too i think it'd be cute i think it would be, really be really cute, cute. <laughs> now you're gonna want to do that yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna the be resources and like the events like you know to support us but i feel like it's also kind of hidden and i will agree with that i will definitely agree with that i think there's um the multicultural center like though they put like an, a lot of a lot of events on I feel like there are some specifically for the LGBTQ Research Center that's mostly solely in the Multicultural Center. Um, like, I know the Latinx Center, they put on uh, Kaya Murray. So, like, you know, that's kind of more campus wide, I would say. That's more targeted towards, like, most of the campus. Um, the Women's Center, they do uh, Take Back the Night, which is, like, you know, a large march that a lot of the campus participates in. I'm not quite sure on the Gwen Lobos Culture Center, if you guys know an event that would be more campus wide, by chance. No. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. I did attend that. Um, so yeah, like you know, we have a couple of different marches and stuff, and like you know, maybe if the even if they did like an LGBTQ march for like allies and LGBT uh, community too, that'd be nice too. Um, so I agree. I think there should definitely be like you know maybe a more campus centered event with I that. I know that the, uh, the MCC, the Multicultural Center, has been doing a really good job of, like, including, like, intersect identities. So, like, even, like, I think it was just, like, yesterday, a couple of days ago, they had the GBCC, the Gwendolyn Books Cultural Center, and the LGBTQ Resource Center. They had a combined event talking about, like, black queer individuals. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that that's something that they've been doing a lot more is kind of, like, intersecting the different centers with each other, which I think is great, but I think, like like you said, Madeline, like kind of making it more university-wide and not just restricted to the multicultural center because just because there's a specific center in the MCC that hosts a specific identity doesn't mean that that's the only place you can do it. Like, for example, you're Filipina. There's no Filipina center, but that doesn't mean that we can't do something as a university or as a bigger campus community to then highlight those communities as well. Um, be a part of the community that could possibly, like, disinclude you guys. Um, like I, I, the spaces that I'm a part of, I, I've never met anyone that is anti-gay. They're either accepting or an ally. So, um, from an, from like a person who can possibly like not support this community and be a part of the community that not supports it, I, I haven't like witnessed or experienced anybody who um, is not supportive of this community. So that kind of like speaks to kind of the community themselves that could possibly not support this. So going into our last kind of uh, question, what resources have you found around campus and in the Macomb community that helps um, those within the LGBTQA community? Talk about a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. No, yeah, uh, the Multicultural Center. <laughs> the Multicultural Center, uh, it's, because I think the LGBTQA uh, Resource Center, that one came out, it was recent, wasn't it? Like a couple of years ago or so? Like that was a newer community that came out. 
into the MCC. There, was, there sure. was a place in the Union over um, down there because you know we're in the Union right now. Um, but it was kind of they make a joke about it. It's like they were kind of put in a closet, which is like kind of like ironic. Um, but the space was fairly small. There, were, like people would go there all the time, but like they needed like a much bigger space because the community is much bigger than can fit in a closet. Um, so um, yeah, they moved to the MCC. I believe it was in 2019. I believe it was pretty recent. Yeah. Like it was like the past year. So. Yeah, I do remember. I do remember that. Um, but yeah, we also have like you know, there's also organizations as well in the MCC, the Multicultural Center, uh, like Unity. Unity is a large one that a lot of people participate in. Um, Lavender graduation. Lavender graduation. That's an yep. That's an event that a lot of people participate in. There's like you know, a whole week of events. I think in the beginning of every first semester, uh, like they take a, they do a picnic, basically, where like you know they um, LGBT picnic. Stuff like that. Um, oh, amateur drag show. That's fun. I've I've always wanted to go to that, and I really really want to do drag next year. I'm very excited. I hope that COVID allows that to happen. That'd be fun. Also, I think something that's really cool that I noticed that happened this semester for me was that um, inclusivity about the LGBTQ plus community was implemented in my teaching. Like. Uh, in the nursing program, which was really cool. Uh, during my mental health class, we had a simulation about us, a man, or someone who went by different pronouns. And it was pretty cool to see that we we're learning things about that, like how to talk to someone who goes by a different pronoun, who goes by a different name than they were born with, and like in a therapeutic way, like as a nurse. So that's really cool. And also just, just subtle and inclusive things in the nursing program that I've noticed. Like I've also had other online simulations where I noticed that one of the nurses had, and it was it was animated, but one of the nurses still had um, like a pride button thing. And I was like, that's really cool, you know? And yeah, I just like, I think that's really cool that's, that's implemented in my major here at Western. I know a few of us are RAs and we had um, safe space training uh, during our training um, this past, winter I think it was and so we got to get a little little sticker that says that we're safe space trained and um, got to talk about the different identities and um, how we can be a resource to those that are part of the community and I thought that was really great that they implemented that into our training and like the pronouns thing in general I think that's a very huge thing that's happening right now like it's it's so interesting to see all these professors and all these different people from different parts of the community like just come together in this kind of same action in a sense of just including your pronouns because that is reducing the I don't want to say stigma but reducing like you know the the oddness of saying oh my pronouns are this 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 in a sense um I think also like using pronouns doesn't have to be just a LGBTQ type thing like if your name is like Casey for example and you have a resume and your name's Casey you may not know if they identify as a as a woman, man. Like you you may not know. So just putting in your pronouns, like it doesn't have to be just like, oh, they may be gay or something like that. It's like it's just you just may not know. You know, someone walking down the street, like you may not know what they identify as. And like having you know pronouns be more normalized, it's like it's just better for everyone, not just the community. I feel like. Oh no, exactly. I'm I, I wish we would have included pronouns like a while ago in general. I mean, like, I, I try to, um, ever since my first year of orientation as an orientation leader, uh, I always try to use y'all, because that's, I feel like that's a more inclusive term, and also just they, like, you know, oh, they're, um, they're a third year, or something like that. I always try to use they or y'all, so, like, you know, try to have that gender neutral term, but, but yeah. Is that all we're sharing today? Okay, awesome. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, sharing and being a part of this conversation. It was very enlightening, and I liked we got to have this conversation in this type of setting. Um, but thank you to those that uh, tuned in with us today. This has been Western Unedited, our voice, our story, our time. <laughs>